Here is my most requested video from my last haul video. And you guys want to know all about this pencil sharpener. I've repacked it just for the sake of the video and just to have a beginning <laughs> of the video. So let's unbox this. So it comes in this lovely red metal tin. Um, it's just got Caran Dash on the front and at the top. And then it's got a flip lid, which is always nice, so you're not gonna lo lose the lid. And then it's got plenty of this black foam, which is the same foam, foam that they use in like their pencil sets. Um, then we get a little instruction manual for different elements of the sharpener, which I'll go through in a moment. And then we've got a clamp, so we can clamp it to the desk, which I will show you towards the end of the video. It's really heavy duty as well, and really heavy. So is the sharpener, spoiler alert. <laughs> um, then we've got another layer of foam, which is a little bit of a pain to get out, but not entirely impossible. Then we've got another layer of foam, which reveals the top of the sharpener. And then, out it comes. And then obviously you've just got lots of foam in there that is, you can take out, so I can repurpose this tin for something. So just pop him to the side for now. So this is the beautiful, very heavy, super heavy industrial sharpener. Um, I've got to admit, I do love the weight of this. I really do. Um, it's in this beautiful limited edition green. Um, it's collector's edition 1933. On the side there, then it says Karen Dash in um, not embossed, the other one, debossed. No, embossed. <sighs> debossed is when it's <laughs> sunk in. Um, and then we've got the little drawer here for where all the um, pencil sharpenings go. Um, a little instructions about how to get different nibs. And then the crank handle, as well as these clamps at the front to clamp your pencil in, which again, soup. All the me mechanisms on this are not going to break very easily. If they do, you're seriously abusing this thing. So, um, let's have a look inside. So, all you do is twist and then pull it out. And then this is the grinding mechanism. So, rather than it sharpening the wood away, and also, nine times out of ten, most of your actual uh, pigment product, whatever pencil you're using in there, um, whereas because this grinds away at the wood, it doesn't take as much of the pigment off. Um, these are replaceable, these parts, um, if they get dull or somehow broken, which you can't, I mean, you can even see how much steel, <laughs> steel, how much steel this is made out of. It's really strong, heavy dust, heavy duty steel. Hopefully it's rust proof as well. I hate hate it when steel goes rusty but yeah all of this is replaceable so if anything does go wrong you don't have to buy a whole entire sharpener again and if you can see inside it's very it's a very simple machine to be honest with you but very effective i've got to admit so can you see those jaws that when you squeeze those together they open up for where you put your pencil in and then that grips hold of whatever pencil you're using and then it's literally just a void down there. If I take the bottom part out, you can see it better. Yeah. So it's literally all the shavings just go in there. It is so, so simple of how it's done. So let's just pop it back together. So when you pop it back together, you've got to line up just where the two indents are. 
So you can see where the metal is, then there's like a, a, a space for you to line up the two bits there. So it's just two bits you need to line up, as well as lining up the hole where the pencil goes in as well, which you sort of have to do by a feel. It's not that difficult, it slots into place, then you lock it until you hear the click again. Now, this little bit here, I can never remember which way around it is, but if you have this so it's screwed all the way in, i.e. you don't see the shiny bit of it, you only see the textured part of it, you get a dull angle, like so. But when it's screwed all the way out and you can see the shiny side, like so, you then get a super, super duper fine point. So let's test this on some pencils. I've got an array of them here. Um, I've got some Faber-Castell, some Holbein, um, and then of course, the reason why I bought this pencil sharpener, pastel pencils. So let's start with the pastel pencils first. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so this is a Karen Dash pastel pencil, and as you can see, I have sharpened this with a blade, which I don't like particularly like doing, not only because you can't get a fine point with the um, pastel, but it also, there's not much, it will break quite easily, because um, I am quite heavy handed. I, I'm trying not to be, but I just instinctively am. Um, and I just don't like using a blade and it's messy and whole, whole other things. So we'll try and sharpen this to a very good point, even though I know it's gonna waste some of the pastel, but just for the sake of the video. Um, then we've got a pastel pencil that I've um, sharpened in with this sharpener, which is my Stedler sharpener, which I've just basically glue tacked into the lid and then use that to collect the sharpenings. Um, but as you can see, it's quite gnarly in terms of the wood. And it's even broken the lead because even when I was sharpening it, it wasn't coming to a point and I was trying to get a little bit more of a point. So that's that. Um, and again, you can see this is a fiber castell pit pen pastel. And again, it's not done it it's the, it sort of cut it at an angle so the um, the leads come out sort of strangely but it's still usable and then of course I've got this chunky boy um, these are just cheap ones from TK Maxx um, I mean it does cut it but again the wood around the top is quite gnarly so it doesn't give the pastel enough buffer to be able to not break easily so we'll try all of these in here. So let's try the wood cutted, wood cutted, the blade cutted pastel pencil. So all you do is squeeze those together, pull that out a little bit. I'm gonna pull it out all the way because this pastel pencil needs a lot. You put the past pencil in there, it grips all of it. So now it looks like that. And then I'm just gonna turn it to a blunt point um, for now and then listen to this noise I love this noise the feel of it as well um, you can sort of feel when you've got the right um, point as well with this um, which I can't obviously show you on video it's just something you've got to feel out but listen to the noise of this I love that noise And as you can see, it's pulling the pencil closer in, but because it's such a strange angle, look at that. Just with a few turns, it has corrected all of that and it has got to a, a point which a lot of people can't say that the um, Karen Dash pencil pencils, you can't get to a point because they're too soft, but actually they're not. And you can easily use them. Do I have some paper without it breaking too much? Um, 
just some paper, paper, paper. This is just sketch pad. Sketch pad paper. You know, it doesn't break off very easily unless you obviously press harder and harder and harder. Let's see what happens when I actually get it to go to a fine point. I'm not going to do it too much because I don't want... See? So that's a super fine point. Which means then, even with the Karen Dash pencils, you can get really small fine lines compared to the line I was doing there. So, as far as I'm concerned, the, this is my perfect match. This is the reason why I bought this pencil sharpener was to get the perfect edges um, with the pastels. So I'm going to show you with this fiber castel because the other thing is with the Karen Dash pencil sharpeners is uh, pencil sharpeners, pe pastel pencils, is that it doesn't really cut in the settler very well because it's a hexagon shape rather than a circle. So you have to put it in the fatter sharpener and again it just doesn't want to cut properly at all so and that's the same with a lot of sharpeners um somebody did say use an eyeliner pencil which again it really an eyeliner pe pencil for the faber castell pe pastel pencils is it works like a dream it's fantastic however because again these are a hexagonal shape <laughs> It doesn't fit into um, eyeliner pencils because eyeliner pencils are round. So let me just show you how well it does actually sh a fiber castell sharpens in a normal sharpener. It does get, you know, it's starting to come to quite a fine point. But again, the wood on it is so gnarly around the top, which doesn't give the actual pigment of whatever pencil you're using a lot of um, strength. So again, let's pop it in there. But can you see how much more smooth that wood is around the edge? And again, you get into that point again. So it works with that. Now let's try this super, super, super chunky boy. Now, if you are getting a set of these from TK Maxx, by all means, get some. They're not the best, and they are quite chalky, and they are scratchy. They will actually scratch your paper, but just for laying down a lot of bold colour very quickly, they're fine, you know. I mean, they don't come in a wide set. Um, I've just got the skin tint ones. But yeah, let's see how this goes. So it fits in there perfectly. opens it up and we get this lovely chunky chunky point but as you can see this is a much chunkier pencil but yeah it works for super chunky ones as well I think it works for up to 12 millimeters in diameter of the pencil so that's the pastel pencils let's try a Karen Dash Luminance Let's try it on the super pointy side this time. And again. I love that noise. Just look at how nice and sharp that is. Let me see. So this is the blunt one. Um, blunt angle. And then the super pointy one on there. I'm getting pastel all over me already, so ignore the colour of my hands, please. Um, this is a Museum Aquarelle, again by Karen Dash. But just to show you on the water-soluble ones as well. Again, beautiful, beautiful point. And they're strong as well, because like I say, it doesn't really 
grind away at the pigment, it grinds away at this wood part mainly. It does get a little bit of that, but not too much. So again, very nicely done. Then we've got a Holbein colored pencil. Again, super duper sharp point. And then this is a Faber-Castell Polychromos. And again, super duper sharp point. Now, my only thing with this pencil is, can I show you on here? Is that because of the clamp is very aggressive, it does leave indentations, if you can see that, where it's clamped onto the pencil. But if you don't mind that, I mean, I don't mind that because I know eventually it's gonna get sharpened away. <laughs> And it doesn't really matter. I mean, let me try and show you on a pastel pencil. Um, there it is a little bit on the cedar wood. Yeah. So that's the only sort of con. But to be honest with you, the way that it grips the pencil, I'd much rather have a much stronger hold than, you know, try and get rid of the indentations. So it's not really a, a con, but just letting... Just being transparent about this. Then of course we've got all our shavings in there, which I like to collect because, you know, you can use these for tex textures for models or to mix them with your paint and get really a lot of texture on canvases and stuff. So, you know, I'm not really wasting anything, <laughs> which is great. Um, what else can we say about this pencil sharpener other than the fact, is it worth it? in terms of price. For me, I know there are, you know, cheaper options out there. Like, I'm gonna leave a link below to the Caran Dash um, pen sharpening machine, as they call them, um, from Jackson's, which if you use my link, you'll get 10% off for you if you're a first customer. Um, so feel free to use that for anything really, not just for the pencil sharpener. But I've le left the link and it's for the plastic version of this, which is much cheaper. I think it's like 50 pounds. Um, again, a lot for a sharpener, I know. But apparently it works just as well as this. It's just obviously it's plastic, so it's much more lightweight and not as heavy duty. Um, and I know that there are other, are other sharpening machines out there that are like 10, 20 pounds that apparently do just as well um as well but i don't know what it is with me in plastic i like to feel wood and i like to feel metal but when i feel uh, grab hold of plastic things it just i don't know it's 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 a tech it's a tactile thing for me anyway but anyway that's a super personal opinion on <laughs> on, on my choice of materials so is this worth the full price of 253 pounds i think it is now that i think that's before inflation um i'm gonna have to say no but because i got this on sale at two at, at, at 120 pounds i'm gonna say yes because when i see my Caran dash pencils like that without breaking which by the way these pencils are very expensive anyway um it has saved me with a lot of pastel pencils and as i've said there are cheaper alternatives don't get me wrong but i have got this in a color that i love it's got the weight that i love it's got that industrial feel that i love it does what it's supposed to do yes it was expensive but this thing is gonna last me a lifetime i'll probably be able to get someone to inherit this <laughs> And it'll still probably work just as fine. Um, so, as someone said in the comments as well, is you've not wasted money on a lot of art materials. What you've done is you've invested for the future. So, this is an investment as, <laughs> as me trying to justify it all to you guys. But no, seriously, if you have the cash and you really love using your pastel pencils, especially the Caran Dash ones, 
I would highly invest in either the plastic version of this or the metal version of this. I, you won't regret it. I mean, I just get joy from using this as well. I just love hearing the grinding and feeling the tension of when you know it's got to a point. Um, so no, I don't regret buying this at all. Um, I get excited when it's like, oh, time to sharpen a pencil. <laughs> I know it's, it's daft and it's a silly thing, but you know, little, little pleasures. I need to show you how it clamps to the desk. Okay, so we've got a good view of the end, you know, the edge of the table. So the great thing about this is you can mount it anyway, because we've got a hole for mounting there, one there, one there, and one there. So you can do it in any direction that you know you're gonna use. I mean, I personally would do it that way, so you can stick your pencil in that way, and then you've got enough room to crank the handle that way. So let's do it like that. So all you do is stick the long handle in there. Then you, you get this piece here. As you can see, it's got teeth there to cramp onto the edge of the desk. You pull that up into the correct position, making sure that this straight edge is on the side of the table. So it'll be somewhat in that sense and then you obviously turn the wing nut in the right direction <laughs> um, to clamp up so let's just pop that there so there we go and you can tighten it as much as you want until you're happy and then this is not going absolutely anywhere at all <laughs> it's clamped there for until you unclamp it and I've got quite solid desk because it's um, bolted to the wall so you know it is really sturdy um, I'm personally not going to clamp it to the desk because you know I work on different tables um, and I like the portability of it and because it's quite weighty anyway it doesn't really bother me um, having it clamped to the desk so I'll just keep the clamp to one side because maybe one day I will. We shall see. But yeah, um, thank you so much for watching. I hope this answered some questions about the sharpener. I know a lot of you are keen to see this video. Um, but yeah, leave me a comment below if you guys have got one of these or if you're thinking about getting one of these um, or if you've got any further questions about it that I've not covered in the video. Um, then please do, you know, drop me a line in, um, a well, drop me a question and um, I'll be happy to oblige as much as I can. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this and found it useful. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.